So today we're going to be defining legacy. You know, we are all about legacy and we want everybody out there to be able to leave an amazing legacy for their family and the people around them. But specifically, we're going to be talking about defining legacy, navigating gender roles in faith and in family. So this is a really huge topic. And so we want to make sure that you guys are in one accord with us, right? We're on the same page. We have the same understanding of what it looks like to navigate gender roles in faith and family as you build your legacy. So why gender roles? Well, because 65% of married couples report having disagreements related to gender roles and responsibilities at some point in their relationship. 65% of people. And so we have a problem with expectations. So we'll get into that a little bit as well. But yeah, that's what we're talking about. That sounds like a lot of people struggling with the idea of who's supposed to do what and when. Yeah. Based on some gender. And it kind of throws in, who <laughs> we get this a lot, who is supposed to be the spiritual leader of the home? Oh man, that's a, a big one. I would like to define legacy as what we leave in the hands and hearts of those we leave behind. It is going to either be a great one or it's going to be a bad one. But you are leaving a legacy. You're leaving a legacy either way. And day by day, the decisions, the actions that you're taking are leaving your legacy one day at a time. So we would challenge you to become a legacy maker so that you could build the life that God intended for you to have. And I think that that is a very important point is that God has something to say about how he envisioned the function of a family to flow. Yeah, I, I think I would love to dive into that. The opposite of um, not tuning into what God has to say for the blueprint concerning the blueprint for your family. Absolutely. The opposite of that is what we grew up around in our family or the opposite of what we're trying to do from what our family or did. what society is trying to tell us. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. So there's a, a, a social psychology dynamic there where we are completely influenced by our surroundings and our environment. And we simply duplicate mm -hmm. what our parents did or what our grandparents did. And sometimes, or, or like you said, you're running away from it. Yes. Yes. And sometimes uh, doing the opposite of what our parents did or mimicking what our parents did is not enough. And we really do have to hear from heaven to get an understanding of because every family is unique. And so you really need to hear from heaven to figure out what is the blueprint for our home. I will say, because unless the Lord builds a house, the labor is labor in vain that build it. So what is speaking to there is that God is an architect and we are the ones framing and carpeting and sheetrocking. We are building that home according to his design. So what does God say about the legacy of generational blessing? You go back to Genesis 1, 27, verse 26, 27. And God is making man and he makes him in his imago day, image and likeness of God. So we are both male and female created he them in his image and likeness. And then he said he blessed them, told them to be fruitful and multiply, yep. to rule and subdue the earth. So the whole idea of gender roles and what the blueprint is, the architect's blueprint for a family is number one, it includes both a man and a woman. That's the function of the original design is that there's a husband and a wife who are going to be married. God would empower the husband and wife in marriage because he married them in mm -hmm. Genesis 2. And they together would rule and subdue mm -hmm. while having babies who would then replicate what was in the seed because every seed reproduces after its own kind. The original kind is Adam and Eve, a man and a woman. Right with God's blessing on them right. in marriage. And then they are representations of God's holiness, love, character, stamping the presence of God over the face of the earth until the glory of God covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. You are supposed to be a man and a woman walking side by side, not behind in mm -hmm. front. It is a merger of a man and a woman equal in their ability to manifest the glory of God to the world by their innate image. So we are all imagers of God. Right. 
And when I say imager of God, again, you are a reflection, a representation of you're made in the image and likeness of God. He is divine and we are not. <laughs> so in the sense of I'm not saying we're 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 gods, but we have the blessing of God to be partners with him in pioneering and in stewarding the things of this world. We have the breath of God. So there's a spark of the divine in us in the sense that he breathed into us and he gave us life. Now, I feel like all of this is essential for us to understand. Oh, absolutely. He breathed into us. We became a living soul with the breath of the almighty. So the inspiration, the God breathed in the New Testament, when it talks about every word from God, all scripture is God breathed. Yeah. That's what I mean. Even in Genesis, a God breathed word of God is an echo of what happened with Adam when God breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. Yeah. Meaning what informed Adam's identity was God's presence. And when you try to build your life, marriage, parent, do roles within the home without God informing you of who you are, you'll make a house in your own image without the blessing imprint reflection mirroring of God. It's going to be a good episode. Okay, well, welcome to the Baloney Podcast. We're Sean and Lynette Reed, and we're helping you get rid of the baloney in your mm -hmm. life because we had a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're helping you leave an amazing, develop and leave an amazing legacy. Um, and so, okay, I, I didn't I want to stop you. Go ahead. So one of the first questions I would ask when people start getting into gender roles is first and foremost, do I believe that we are imagers of God? And when we say we're images of God, again, that doesn't mean that I am a co-equal member of the triune God, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. No. But what does it mean? It means that I am empowered again, to be a representation or a representation, God's ambassador, steward, of this world under his blessing and authority to rule and subdue in the earth. When I say rule and subdue, better way of saying it is you're a manager. Um, you're to manage what God entrusts into your care. So whatever property you get, talents you have, yeah. kids you raise, business you own, money you get, trees in your backyard, whatever car you drive, whatever clothes you wear, all that stuff, all of it comes under the authority of God. The first role that both the genders need to have is to be a child of God. Yeah. If you're not a worshiper of God, what are you worshiping? If you're not submitted to his authority, where are you pulling from? What are you pulling from? It's probably going to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're self-informed, then at that point, no wonder there's so many wars between one another, mm -hmm. because if I'm self-informed, mm -hmm. I'm going to rule something. Yeah. So a woman could rule over a man mm -hmm. or a man will try to rule over and dominate the woman and call it headship. Yeah. Headship becomes a term for some that essentially it relates to controlling. And that's not what yeah. headship is. It doesn't mean you control your wife or your kids. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the wife is supposed to control the husband. And it doesn't mean that whoever has the most money. See, all, all of a sudden, when I don't lead with God is the head of my life, which then informs the empowerment of my identity, then other things will inform my identity. How much money we make? Who's the bigger breadwinner in the home? So if the woman makes more money than the man, does she have more sway in where, what the direction of the home goes in? Or if a man makes more money and the woman's a stay-at-home mom, does that mean that all of a sudden he should have more control? See what I'm saying? Yeah. So now other things are leveraging how the home operates yeah. because they're not informed by God's authority, first and foremost. I think when a family, to that comment, I think when a family hears from heaven, and gathers the blueprint from the Lord, and they're both, both spouses are inhaling from God, mm -hmm. and then exhaling, when they exhale out, it is the vision and, and how things are ran in their home. When you have a family that's doing that, mm -hmm. they are so attractive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people wonder, like, well, how do you guys do it? You mm -hmm. guys are so different. How do you make it work? And, mm -hmm. and, and it's really because they're hearing from heaven and they're exhaling what they're, what they receive from him. Yeah. What happens when you, when, when God is the head of your life, it humbles your heart because you don't need to build monuments unto yourself to give you the illusion of power. Mm. And when you do that, you're pushing, you're pushing, you're aggressive. Yes. Uh, you won't rest. You have to have the last word. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, because pride then goes before destruction. So if I am trying to establish my credibility by show of force, mm -hmm. you ain't going to talk to me like that. You know what I mean? When, when, when 
when that's ruling the house, that's what caused Lucifer to fall from heaven and become Satan. It was pride. He said, I will ascend. I will make my throne. I will become like the most high. Yeah. Everything became I, I will instead of God, you are. And you gave. And you empower. Yeah. And you inform. And without that, it's a great lesson you get to learn from the fall of Satan. If you want a house to fall, let it be divided against itself. A house divided against itself cannot stand. How yeah. does a house divide and fall apart? It's when hubris enters in, pride, yeah. arrogance, and people are less important than, than the other. And so with God in the beginning, he makes man in his image and in his likeness. They have this, is, and this is very important because I know there are different denominations that teach different things. So just hear me out because there's some words that's going to come in in a minute that, okay. that are going to okay. be trigger words for people. And I want you to hear my heart from the beginning. A woman and a man are equal in value. They are equal in value because both of them are God's imagers. The woman is not less than a man. A man is not less than a woman. However, in genetic makeup, it's a fact that, you know where you're going. That number one, we're different. And usually not always, because there's some strong sisters out there, but in most cases, men are physically built differently mm -hmm. than women. And we need to embrace that and not be ashamed of it. It shouldn't be an embarrassing statement. And so there are certain things that typically men should be able to do. And I want to go further and say should be willing to do. And here's why. I believe the role of a husband is to be the head of the wife. And what I define that as, because I see it in Christ Jesus. Jesus took the lead in sacrificing himself so that his bride can live yep. while she was in sin. While the bride of Christ was in sin, while we were ungodly, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were in sin, he didn't wait for us to get ourselves together. He initiated saving work. He initiated reconciling work. He so loved that he was willing to die to self so that the bride and the marriage can exist. So a great example of what it means for a man to be the head of his house is to say that you are the first to self-sacrifice. That's right. You are the first to show what sacrificial love is. It does not necessarily mean that you have to be the first one to make the decisions on budgeting when your wife is in accounting. She may be like a genius. Let that woman crunch those numbers. Let her crunch them numbers. Because if that's her giftedness, yeah. Like, so it's funny, even, even in this sense, even in scripture, I'm just saying like, even with the administration of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like a person could be gifted with the gift of yeah. administration. Yeah. So you're going to take a person who has gift of administration and sit them behind somebody who ain't mm -hmm. got no gift, mm -hmm. nor talent, not even the spiritual gift, but not right. even the talent to right. administrate. But because one is a woman and one is a man, the man has to be in charge of the woman who has not only the talent and the Holy Spirit's gift, but she can't serve in a role. <laughs> Because she doesn't have man parts. Right, right. I'm trying to be sensitive to the kids that may be in the car listening to the podcast. Mama, gonna... what he said? <laughs> so hearing all of this now that we are on the same page, no one is greater, no one is lesser. Equal in value in, in that we identity, are God's imagers. Mm -hmm. God's imagers, all the things. So hearing all of that and understanding it, it is okay for a man to make less than a woman. Yep. It is okay for a woman to work. Yes. It is okay for a woman to stay, stay home. At home. It is okay for a man to clean. And it doesn't make a woman more holy or more in alignment with God to not have a job and to stay at home. And it is okay for a woman to pray, lead the family in prayer. Yep. But a man should also lead his lead. house in prayer. There as well. you go. It could be both and. That's it. Let, let me give some scenarios that people don't think about because when they put these rigid rules up that, oh, the man has to be the one to pray. What if that man was in a car accident? He laid up in the hospital. And he whole, can't talk anymore. He can't talk. The whole family Who surrounded praying him. now? Who praying? Who going to pray? What are we going to do? Prayer just don't matter no more because- We just going to sit in silence. You see what I'm saying? It, it, brother had throat surgery. And then you got to look at him. Yeah. You, you wonder, finished? right, right out the prayer so we could all get prayed for. It's weird. When we put these weird restrictions in, we could just begin to say like, okay, this stuff doesn't even make right. sense when we just think about it. So- my challenge to us is to back up and then say, wait, first and foremost, what does, and this is going to be important, a man should be the lead servant. And then there's this word that I talked about that I said would be really controversial, which is the word submit. submit. So a, a woman as submitted to her headship husband, when Paul in Ephesians 5, he gives this breakdown of the mystery of Christ in the church being the head of the body as a, a, a husband being the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church who gave himself for her sacrificial. Mm -hmm. It's literally right there. But then it says, wives submit to your husbands 
as unto the Lord. Right. And this scripture becomes very controversial, but the idea behind it is, can a wife surrender to her husband in a way that says, I will defer to your leadership, but does that mean that she has to forfeit hers No. in order to defer? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. all of a sudden, the interpretation of that becomes, she doesn't have a will, she doesn't have talents, a voice, she doesn't have opinion. a voice. Opinion, yeah. It's like, what? Where, where does this extreme come from? Well, it was taught primarily by some real controlling, misguided yep. men in the past, which leads then to a false interpretation of yeah. what it is. So when we start talking about a, a wife submitting to her husband, what, what that is referring to in scripture, it is not saying that the woman is to be subservient. It doesn't mean that she doesn't have a voice. She doesn't have an opinion. Right. What it means is that she's willing to say, I will include yes. and look to. And listen for and lean on yeah. your covering and your sacrificial love to actually lend strength to my life so that we can produce something great together. But then it gets deeper because a few verses Wait, later, there's more. There is more. A few verses later, it literally says husbands and wives submit yourselves one to another. So it doesn't just tell wives to submit. It also says in this pattern yeah. of men being sacrificial, loving leaders and women being willing to honor and not disrespect her husband, but to allow her. Yeah. It's a partnership. Mm -hmm. And it says that in this love and respect dynamic as the great book, love and respect is phenomenal read in that book. One of the things that it talks about is the fact that most women want to feel secure that she's a priority in yeah. the man's life and a man wants to feel honored and respected by his wife. When you have that pattern, that balance, all of a sudden the man's going to feel loved. The woman is going to feel safe and secure. Yeah. And that tension that God knew would exist from the beginning, yep. it gets resolved in being able to honor one another in mm. those respective roles. Now I just had this beautiful picture because we're talking about legacy, right? We're talking about building a legacy. What does it look like? Imagine a home where that is happening between the husband and the wife, mm -hmm. but it's happening out loud, right? The kids are seeing yep. that dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. That partnership, that effort to merge and to lean into one another and submit to one another. If your children see that, right. they're going to grow up yeah. seeing, okay, mom and dad did this. I saw mom and dad pray. Mm -hmm. I saw mom and dad hear from heaven. I saw mom and dad's identity being rooted in the Lord and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now I want to mimic that into my home. Right. The, the question becomes, that's how you leave a great legacy in your family. Absolutely. Because what you have is pride didn't lead the house. Love did. Mm -hmm. And love was expressing itself in servitude. That's what love is. Jesus said, uh, uh, remember he, he did his thing where he started washing feet. And disciples were like, Lord, stop it. And he said, bro, if I don't do this for you, this is Sean Reed translation. He said, if I don't do this for you, you won't understand what the kingdom is. Yeah. The whole point of it is to be servants of one another. Christ made himself of no reputation. Yes, that's it. Stripped himself of his, that's it. His, his divine glory in heaven, came down through a virgin and took on the form of a, a servant to restore mankind. He is our ultimate example of humility. So if you want to know gender roles, and how to effectively lead in the home, it's submission and servitude. And submission is not this dirty word that means subservience. And servitude is an act of being Christ-like. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, listen to this for all my women out there. The Holy Spirit surrenders to, submits to the authority of Jesus. Because Jesus said that I would not leave you comforted, but I will send another comforter after, after a, a comforter who is just like me, so that you won't be orphans. And when he comes, he won't testify of himself, but he will testify of me. So the Holy Spirit is God, the Spirit. And yet... He's submitting. He's submitting. And Jesus submitted to the Father. Mm -hmm. So when we see this picture of Christ submitted to the Father, the Holy Spirit submits to Jesus. And yet they're also one. And they're all one. You got it. Mm -hmm. And neither is less God. Mm -hmm. And yet there's perfect harmony and unity. So if we want to be like God, submission has to be in your vocabulary. Oh, he preaching today. He preaching today. <laughs> what an offering best. So so it it a man loses no power. He loses no self-worth or value when he looks to his wife and says to her, Hey, what's your opinion? What do you think? Mm. 
What do you think we should do? And a wife doesn't lose any value if she decides to say, you know what? I want to stay home and just invest in the kids because that's what God is telling me. Forget what society is saying. That's it. She may she may get a dream or a desire in her heart to all of a sudden she wants to homeschool. That's a powerful God role. breathed yes role and responsibility that should not be taken lightly. And then she may have a dream to become the CEO of a marketing agency. Mm -hmm. And the husband is like, whoa, that sounds like a lot. Let's pray about it. That's not the man trying to keep the woman back. Right. That's them two being able to say, well, let's lift this up before God. We need a blueprint, a structure. Let's hear from heaven because yeah. it may be yes, but not yet. And so then for her to say, so you're saying not yet. This, this is what the conversation looks like. Yeah. And the husband is able to say, yeah, I, I, I believe it. I want to support you. But can we do that in another year once the kids mm -hmm. start elementary school mm -hmm. instead of us doing it right now? See, that's healthy. Yeah. When they can have that kind of dialogue and it's not not ever. I think in our, when I <laughs> keep your thought, I had the, the picture of the movie Fences in my head. <laughs> you remember she got to the end and she was crying and stuff because she was like she deferred all her dreams and sacrificed oh, yeah. herself <laughs> for them to. <laughs> And she just gave yeah. up on everything. And she yep. was crying and snot and everything. But and you don't Davis have to. It to you don't you have, have to. to. You don't have so to. So when I think back <laughs> um, on prior years in our relationship, I think our relationship, it, it is not reflective of the societal norms. I don't like to cook that much. Mm -hmm. And so that's just not my forte. But Sean loves to cook. So Sean does most of the cooking in our home. Mm -hmm. However, I really do enjoy cleaning. But that is not to say that Sean doesn't clean. It was funny that you just talked about school because I had had a passion to go back to school, but timing was awful. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a church and then we sent three kids to uh, college, mm -hmm. two of them private schools. And so it was really a not yet. And so I just finished what second semester mm -hmm. of school just went back. You're doing great, by the way. I'm doing great. Thank you. I don't think a person has to push aside their dreams, their goals, or put themselves into a role that it just doesn't suit them. I don't lose man credit by washing laundry. Man credit. And if I did, man credit. how whack is my manhood mm. that, that my wife is the only one who mm. could change our kids' diapers? Because if I have to do it, I don't do diapers because that ain't what men do. I'm going to get the bacon. And I'm like, what does that mean? The bacon can be delivered. Here's the thing. There's a single dad out there that's doing both right now. That's doing everything. There's a single dad that's working. Yes cleaning but, such a but, good point but the flip side is um a, a single single mom that's holding it down she doesn't have to say that she's replacing a man either that's it she doesn't get a father's day gift mm -mm. because she's a great mom yeah that child still yeah. would benefit from having a male yeah. presence. I remember, I <laughs> we, think we, we, y'all get what I'm saying? So these chores don't yes. make us into a different gender because okay so this happened early on in our marriage <laughs> like, come on people this happened early on in my marriage. Ugh. I was cleaning and I love to clean, but I got overwhelmed at one point. And I, I, I don't know if I asked you to clean. I don't know the details around the scenario, but it was like, baby, you would be cleaning if you were single. So being married to me doesn't make a difference. You would have to clean anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to need you to clean. Yeah. Somebody's brain has said, because this goes back to the social stuff you was talking about, because I saw, let's just say mama clean. All these years when I got married, I just expected you was going to start cleaning too. Yeah, no. And so the dude wants to sit around playing games while the wife is doing all the chores. That may have been what you saw with your mom and them. But what you need to do now is pray through how y'all's house is going to yeah. work this season. Because I guarantee you, it'll shift. I wrote a whole book about it called Marriage in Transition. You can go to Amazon.com right now. You can I'll get put it in the show notes. Marriage in Transition. You need to get that book. It'll change your life. But come on. Y'all see the new cover? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So my challenge to everybody listening, and, and I went back to the root, because if you don't start right. with Genesis, right. you're going to start with somebody who's telling you that gender roles are neutral now. And that's bullcrap. God didn't make gender uh, neutral, neutral. And we don't need to, to be sitting here neutering masculinity or propping up femininity in some way that God didn't ordain. I am from someone. God is created and put us here and he put us here by design i'm wearing a watch right now i'm wearing a watch this watch has a touch screen this watch has a band on it it can track steps it can read email i'm looking at the time in melbourne right now because i have a clock that constantly tells me what time my son is on as he is in australia right now 
it has the date and time. This didn't come together by accident. Intelligent design suggest an intelligent designer. There is an Apple logo on this thing. This comes from a company that thought about making this thing and put it on. I bought it. And so we who have the ability to procreate by two different things coming together as one and surrendering to themselves sexually, then all of a sudden what's in the man complements what's in the woman. The woman can receive what the man is dishing out and then she can birth something that they can raise together. And so when you put all that together, even in the makeup of what it takes for us to replicate life, it is by God's design that the gender facilitates procreation, mm. not necessarily sweeping. It doesn't require me to be less of a man if I can help with the dishes. It doesn't make her more of a woman or, or more of a man as a woman. It doesn't make her more of a man or more masculine because she's going to get a job. And, and we're going to work to pay these bills together. So all these stereotypes have to come under the authority of the intelligent designer, the architect of the blueprint of your home. So the question becomes, first and foremost, can you walk in divine authority as a man and woman and not punish one another for being strong leaders? We should be able to have a mutual respect that she's a strong, powerful woman made in the image and likeness of God to rule and subdue and me too. And that doesn't have to compete. If we can learn to honor one another in our gender and under the covenant that God has given us, there's room for it all. And then with that, we look at whatever God has put in our hands to manage. And we say, God, tell us with the gifts and talents and abilities that you have instilled in both the man and the woman, and then bring those things together and surrender it to God and say, tell us how we should run this. So it's most efficient, most effective, most blessed. And then all of a sudden God begin to stir something up on the inside and that thing will work. <sighs> well, if your ego is bruised, well, listen, check your identity. Cause this is the truth. Check your heart. You got strong women who right now are taking a back seat to what some denomination done told her she can or cannot do. And some husband, because some preacher in some denomination said that she can't do this, is submitting to their authority, some church doctrine, not even scripture. And that doctrine is controlling his house and limiting their legacy. When you think about a man and what society is saying right now, men can or cannot do everything that makes a man strong and mm -hmm. powerful, not abusive, not um, mm -hmm. not manipulative, not, not mm -hmm. dogmatic, but just strength, mm -hmm. masculine power. Nothing wrong with that. It should not be despised. Men are being shamed for just being strong. And and so even our TV shows, cartoons. And they're being sh and shamed for just being emotional. It, so he can't figure out what to be. Yeah. You, you see the butt of every joke on most of these kids TV shows, what you see on these teen shows, the dad is an idiot. The dad yes. is an imbecile. The mom is in power. Or it's always a single mom. It's a single mom. Or it's a same-sex relationship. You see more same-sex relationships in every TV show, sitcom, series than you do regular relationships. And that's not even a balance within the society in, in the ratios that we actually have. Right. And the idea is we're going to push agendas to force you into embracing and accepting something that's contrary to God's design. But is that surprising to us when the mm -hmm. Bible says that the enemy is the prince of the powers of the air? He is the Lord case G God of this world. And, and so rulers of the darkness of this world, spirits of wickedness in high places, how do they communicate? It's a reason why he's the prince of the powers of the air. And where do signals travel on? What does the most information travel on? Airwaves. It's real simple. The Bible makes it very clear that this is spiritual warfare. So if I want to destroy a family, how do I do it? I tear down what the image of a man is. I tear down what the image of a woman is. And then I make it so petty for them to squabble over household chores that they don't know how to go out and take territory and rule and subdue and like Abraham and Sarah did. Who going to take out the trash? Who going to take out the trash? Oh. All the more reason to hear from heaven. All the more reason. Man, I'm fired up. Because that. again, if you can, I, I, I can't get that phrase out of my head. Mm -hmm. A family that hears from heaven is attractive and it catches the eye of other people. I mean, Jesus, what is, and they want to know how it's done. Jesus they want to know what his you're doing. Come, his will be done. So here's what I want to do. I want to encourage y'all to get the how to hear God course. 
We'll put the link down in that show note. Y'all know how this thing works. How to hear from God, because Lynette, to your point, we're talking about couples hearing together. We're talking about single people. If you ain't married yet, you want to be married, man, get you somebody know how to hear Jesus. It makes life so much better. Yeah. And not them spooky, weird people who think they're hearing Jesus because he got to tell them to do everything. He got to tell them to brush their teeth, tie their shoe. The Lord told me, the Lord told me, and they hear a word a minute. Maybe they're misinformed. They need to listen to the course too. But you want to make sure that you actually know what the scriptures say about hearing from God, receiving the breath of the Almighty, empowering you in your identity yep. so that you can build a blessed legacy instead of passing down generational brokenness. So if you want that, make sure you get it. We pour a lot of wisdom and revelation and scriptural references so that you would know exactly how to hear from God and your life and world to the next level. If y'all have questions about this, please submit them. We would love love to have a discussion on this subject with yeah. you. Love y'all. Okay. God Bye. bless.